Hi, Mr. Richards here, coming to you today to talk about terminating and repeating decimals. Well, any fraction can be expressed as a decimal by dividing the numerator by the denominator, a method we will be practicing here. The decimal form of a fraction is called a repeating decimal. Repeating decimals can be represented using bar notation. In bar notation, a bar is drawn only over the digits that repeat. For example, in 0 0.33333 forever, we draw the bar just over one of the threes, representing that three repeating forever. With the 0 0.1212, we only draw it over the one two. And in the case of 11.38585, what is repeating here? Well, it's not 385, it's 85. So we write that 11.3 and then the 85 with the bar over just the 85. Now, if the repeating digit is zero, this means it's a terminating decimal. The terminating decimal 0 0.250 with that zero repeating is typically written as 0.25 or one fourth. So here we want to match the repeating decimal to the correct bar notation. In the first 1.11111, we only have the one repeating, and so we can represent that here. In the 0 0.611111, what's actually doing the repeating? Well, it's just the ones. So that's represented up here with the 0.6 with the bar over just the one. And the last one here, well, there's only one left, but besides that, it's the 616161 repeating, which is straight across here. Now, our decimal system is based on powers of 10, such as 10, 100, and 1,000. You've heard us talk about tenths and hundredths and thousandths. Well, if the denominator of a fraction is a power of 10, you can use place value to write the fraction as a decimal. Now, 7 tenths is done for us. In, in words, it's 7 tenths. And as the fraction, that's 7 over 10, or just 0.7, representing 7 tenths, 7 in the tenth spot. What about 19 hundredths? Well, as a fraction, that is 19 over 100. As a decimal, this is 0 0.19, just 19 hundredths. Notice the 9 ends in the hundredth spot, so it's 19 hundredths. What about 105 thousandths? Well, 105 over 1,000. And to write this then as a decimal, this would be 0 0.105. Notice how the 5 ends in the tenths, hundredths, thousandths spot, and we read that 105 thousandths. So if the denominator of a fraction is a factor of 10, 100, 1,000, or any greater power of 10, such as 10 thousandths and 100 thousandths and millionths and 10 millionths, and we'll stop there, you can use mental math and place value instead of having to divide. So, in our first set of examples here, we'll write each fraction or mixed number as a decimal. Well, our first one here is three-tenths. Now, remember with place value, we have tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. There is no such thing as oneths. There is no oneths place. We start to the right of the decimal into the tenths. So when we have three tenths, we're going to look and say, okay, I'm going to put the three in the tenths spot. So this is going to be 0 0.3. Now, 3 25ths is a bit of an interesting challenge, but ask yourself, can I write a fraction that's over 25 into a fraction that's actually over 100? Sure. If I multiply the 25 by 4, 25 times 4 is 100. So if I multiply the top 3 times 4, that leaves me with 12. Now this is 12 hundredths. I want to end this in the hundredth spot. So I'm just going to put my 12 in as 0 0.12 or 12 hundredths. Now, my negative six and a half 
I'll tell you right now, as a decimal, this is going to be negative six point something. I mean, when you're given a mixed number, especially one that's negative, just write that with your decimal and then focus on the one half part. Just focus on that. Now, remember, we're looking for powers of 10, 10, 100, 1,000. So we can get one half, if you don't have that memorized already, what that decimal is, we can get that into a power of 10. Since 2 times 5 is 10, 1 times 5 is 5, which leaves us with 5 tenths. Well, the tenths is that first spot to the right, so this is going to be negative 6.5. Write each fraction or mixed number as a decimal. Use bar notation if needed. Now, on these examples, we have eighths. We're not going to be able to get our eighths into tenths or hundredths or even thousandths. Well, maybe thousandths, but that would be very difficult. So instead, what we can do is say, all right, I am going to take my seven-eighths. I'm going to write this in color so we can see a little bit better how we're doing and that Eight's not in color yet, so let's get that in blue. When we look to divide, we're going to take our top number, 7, and we're going to divide it by the bottom number, 8. That top number goes on the inside of our division problem. Now, for that 7, what we need to do is write a decimal point to the right of it and a whole bunch of zeros. Now, in our answer, our decimal point's going to go straight up. 8 doesn't go into 7. But 8 goes into 70 about 8 times. And 8 times 8 is 64. And 70 minus 64 is 6. Bring down your 0 here. We're going to keep going until we either repeat or terminate. 8 goes into the 60 now about 7 times. And 8 times 7 is 56, so we can subtract. We have our 4. Bring down this zero here, and now I think we'll have see the end of this. 8 goes into 40 five times, subtract the 40, and we get the zero. Once we get the zero, or we see a pattern of repeating, we can stop. So, 7 eighths is 0 0.875. Now, I did not forget about that negative there, so don't forget about that negative either. Our final answer here is a negative 0 0.875. Now what about our next answer, 2 and 1 eighths? Well, just like in the previous examples where we kind of took that, uh, the whole part of the mixed number and saved it for the end, we're going to do that here as well. We're going to say this is 2 point something and focus on just our 1 eighth. Now if we go to divide this like we did on the previous one, we put 1.000. And how many zeros do you need? Eh, you can never need or put too many really. I mean, you can keep going forever and ever on some of these if you really had to. But what's the worst that can happen if you write too many? You just have a couple extra zeros really. Anyways, 8 doesn't go into 1, but it does go into 10 once. Subtract the 8, and you're left with a 2. Bring down the 0, and 8 goes into 20 two times. Subtract 2 times 8 is 16. And you're left with the 4. Bring down one more 0, and 8 goes into 40 five times. And subtract the 40, and you get your end of 0. And we have all those extra zeros? Who cares? They're there. They're there if we needed them. So 1 eighth is 0 0.125, but don't forget we have the 2 in 1 eighth, so this is 2 decimal point 125 for our final answer. Now I realized after putting this together that I forgot a couple of questions, so let's put those questions in now. 
All right, so here's our directions again. Write each fraction or mixed number as a decimal and use bar notation if needed. Same directions as the last example. And here are our two examples. Well, with the negative, one thing we can do here is say, I'm going to save it for the end. So we're going to have 3 over 11. And if we set this up as a division problem now, We'll have our 3.0000000 on the inside, divided by that 11 on the outside. Now, 11 doesn't go into 3, but it does go into 30 about 2 times. And 2 times 11 is 22. Subtract and get the 8. Bring down a 0. 11 goes into 80 about 7 times. Subtract 77, and you get a 3. Bring down a 0, and at this point, the more you practice these, the more you'll see, wait a minute, here's a 30 that I'm looking to get 11 into, and here was a 30 that I was looking to get 11 into. Now, if we just continue with this, 11 goes into 30 once again two times, same as before, since, well, that part's not going to change. You subtract the 22 and end up with an 8, and then you bring down a 0 again. And if you haven't noticed it before, you should notice by now that here's an 80, and here's an 80. I've got something repeating going on here. And even if I wanted to do this one more time, 11 goes into 87 times. Subtract 77 and get the 3. And by now, when you bring down a 0, you should notice, wait a minute. There's some kind of repeating going on here. And what's repeating is the 2727. So how do I write this as an answer? Well, it's going to be a negative 0 0.27, and the 27 is repeating. So that's all you need to write with the bar over just the 27. You do not want to write this as negative 0 0.2727 with the bar over all four. It seems trivial, but you don't want to write it like that. Let's move on to G, where we have 8 and 1 third. And as we've done before, let's just save that 8 for the end. We don't need to include it in our division. That way we can just have 1 over 3. And when we set up this division problem, we're going to have 1.00000 on the inside as the top number goes on the inside and our bottom number 3 on the outside. 3 doesn't go into 1, but it goes into 10 mm, 3 times. Subtract 9, and I get 1. Bring down the 0, and wait, there's another 10. I just did a 10. So 3 goes into 10 3 times. Subtract 9. Hey, there's a 10. Now, you could keep going. There's really no point at this point because you can notice that the 3 is repeating. So, our answer is 8.3 with the bar over the 3. So on these types of problems, when you're looking for bar notation, look for the repeating down here first because that'll show you when it's going to be repeating up top. Now we get to go from decimals to fractions. That's exciting. Determine the fraction of the aquarium made up by each fish. Write the answer in simplest form. Well, when we have the molly fish, our molly fish right now is 0 0.2, but if we use place value for some of our basic fractions into decimals, we can use place value to help us out here as well. Remember, when I have my 0 point blah, 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 we have tenths, hundredths, and thousandths, and perhaps blah, blah, blah wasn't the best way to describe place value, but I think you get the point. We have tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. And where is this 2 right now? What's well, in the tenths spot? So how can I write this as a fraction? We'll write it as 2 tenths. Now we want this in simplest form, so we can divide by 2 on top and bottom since both are even. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. 
10 divided by 2 is 5, and so the molly fish is 1 fifth. What about our guppies? Well, our guppies here, 0 0.25. Well, that 25 is 25 hundredths, so we have 25 over 100. And you can actually divide top and bottom here by 25 to get your result of 1 fourth. And then we have our angelfish, how lovely to end with, 0 0.4. And once again, that 4 is in the tenth spot. So I can rewrite this as 4 over 10. And here, once again, I can divide by 2 on top and bottom in order to get this into simplest form. And simplest form here is 2 fifths. That's it. Good luck.